In this video, we'll be looking at another famous visualization. This one was used to depict France's Russian campaign in 1812. So by the end of this video, you should be able to explain why the data visualization of Napoleon's Russian campaign in 1812 is considered so effective. Charles Joseph Minat created this figure in 1869. The title of the figure is, when translated to English, Figurative Map of the Successive Losses in Men of the French Army in the Russian Campaign, 1812 through 1813. Minat was a successful civil engineer in France who was considered an early leader in using visualizations in engineering and statistics. He is most well known for creating this figure, figure which charted that Russian campaign. In orange, you have the French army as it advanced from the crossing of the Nyman River towards Moscow. In black, you have the French army in retreat. The width of the line depicts the size of the army. You could zoom in quickly to the Nyman River where you'll find the army's size at the start and the end of the campaign. You can see almost instantly how disastrous the invasion of Russia was for the French. They started with around 450,000 troops, although some estimates are actually higher, and they ended with barely 10,000. So how were those losses suffered? Let's briefly talk through this campaign using the figure. So first, what started all this? In 1812, Russia, under Tsar Alexander I, had been blockading British goods as allies of France. They were blockading British goods under Napoleon's edict that barred trade with England. However, the banning of trade with England was having a disastrous effect on the Russian economy, so Russia decided to end its participation in the embargo. Napoleon, after nego negotiations with Russia to restore the embargo failed, began his campaign to invade Russia in 1812. The plan was to attack the smaller Russian army near the Russian border, crush it in battle, and end the war. That was the plan. However, the Russian army refused to engage Napoleon's huge army in direct battle. As the Russian army fled back to Moscow, they would destroy the countryside, causing the French army to fall short on supplies. You can see that in the highlighted region of this figure here. In addition, Russian Cossacks would perform small hit-and-run attacks on the French army, both killing troops and also lowering morale. Without engaging in any battle, the French army was suffering huge losses, mostly due to sickness and to desertion. Napoleon finally got the battle he desired at the village of Borodino outside of Moscow. The battle was brutal, and ultimately France prevailed, but it did so without the decisive victory it desired. On September 14th, the French army moved into Moscow, only to find it deserted, and shortly, much of it was on fire. Napoleon had expected a Russian surrender when he entered Moscow, but he would never receive one. After waiting a month in Moscow to negotiate surrender, snow flurries began to fall. Napoleon realized his army could not weather the winter in Moscow. After leaving Moscow, the French army was attacked by the Russian army, which had re received reserves and was now able to actually go on the offensive. Their presence forced Napoleon to flee using a northern route, which was problematic as winter continued to set in. Moreover, the Russian forces were able to attack the French, ar French army as they continued to flee. Conditions during the retreat were terrible. The troops lacked supplies, they were being attacked while they were fleeing, and they had to endure an early and harsh winter. On this figure, of the temperatures the troops faced during their retreat. Temperatures were often below zero, and the army encountered a great deal of snow. So by the time Napoleon's army returned to their start, it was a tiny fraction of its former strength. Without the might of his former army, Napoleon's power in Europe would now come under challenge. So what makes this visualization so special? Most notably, it has six types of data all being visualized which we've discussed. We have the latitude and the lo longitude for the armies. We have the direction the army was traveling, the size of the army, the distance the army traveled, and the temperature uh, the army faced during their retreat. By encoding all these types of data, one figure is capable of presenting the story of how French losses, of the, of French losses during the Russian campaign in 1812. To conclude, I want to acknowledge some of the key sources I use when assembling this video. 
Thank you to Jesse Greenspan, The Economist, and the PBS for their excellent articles on the Russian campaign of 1812. I encourage you to explore these articles more if you wish to learn more.